Greyzone Warfare is a game I'm actually excited about. As someone who's new to the extraction shooter genre and kind of got into it with DMZ and really enjoyed it, but it felt that game was lacking a lot of depth. Greyzone Warfare looks to be a game that is going to be delivering exactly what a tactical, hardcore extraction shooter player wants out of their game, utilizing the Unreal 5 engine, as you can tell, just the visual aesthetics of this game look really nice. And the developers of the game just released a 25 minute long gameplay video, just raw gameplay of people playing. And I wanted to kind of break down and see what kind of interesting mechanics and how this game is actually going to play out. So come along with me along the ride as we do with these uh, extraction shooter friends over here. You can see the scale of what we're talking about here. It looks like this is going to be a bit like a spawn zone for you to kind of get your stuff situated, get your, your scopes and everything calibrated that you need to be ready to go into the gameplay. And then you have the helicopter call in, takes you into the playable area where you can play against PVE and PVP at the same time. And this visual aesthetic, again, like is just really cool. I'm really liking how this game looks. Again, like I said, utilizing the Unreal 5 engine. I watched a little bit of this already. It will point out different aspects that where you can see where the engine really kind of just come through with these little more immersive little bits of detail. And we can see the helicopter landing here. I'm not quite sure where you can choose where to land or if the game already does that for you. We just have to wait and see when you actually get more hands-on experience with playing it. This game is expected to release in 2024 this year. So we get a chance to hopefully have yeah, some betas, maybe some early access. We'll see what happens. So in this gameplay, we follow two different players out of this four player squad here. We have Dave and I believe the guy, the guy's name is Marek, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. One is a bit more of a long range sniper and one's a bit more of an assault rifle type of player. And you can see later on in the gameplay that the scale of gunfights you can get yourself into. Having a long range weapon like a sniper rifle could be very beneficial. Uh, initially, what I want to point out though is the motion of the characters. You can kind of see that with the way the players walk, at least in the from third person angle, watching people walk, it doesn't look like as like visceral or as uh, natural. It looks a little bit more video gamey. This is coming from a smaller dev team, so that's expected, but looks good enough to where it would be just fine. Now, this is where I was talking about with the Unreal Engine aspects of it. You can see as players kind of walk through the different tall bits of grass, you can see the grass kind of moving off to the side. You see these bushes that players are actually interacting with. You don't see that in games like Call of Duty where everything is much more stagnant to kind of help out with the performance of the game. But when utilizing this new engine that they're able to have more interactive elements for the immersion of the game though i will say it does look a little framey this is an early access build so maybe when the game fully releases they can be smoothed out a bit more next we can hear the voices of the pve players and so then that's why they slow down a little bit here interesting thing right there i really liked is that you're able to detach the camera to look left or right to see where people are coming from rather than having the gun in front of you at all times i also want to point out since this game does focus a lot on realism right that you do deal a lot of damage a lot it seems like a lot of these uh ai bots can be taken out in like one or two bullets kind of thing but you know that's kind of what would happen in real life right you can see right here like the image is blurred a little bit so i'm wondering if there's a bit of a suppression mechanic with this game as well something maybe similar to the battlefield style maybe when you're getting shot at you are doing more recoil when you try shooting or more idle sway things like that that'd be really interesting but if it gets in the way of your shot like your bullet just will go in a random direction like battlefield 3 suppression did then that'd be really bad you can see right here this player was using a bit of a scope here you can kind of tell get a better idea of like what kind of scale of gunfights you can possibly get yourself into so having a good scope on your weapon might be very beneficial with this game as you can see just like the land in general not a lot of elevation changes you know there are maybe some buildings you can climb up there is a water tower over there you can kind of see you might be able to get into or climb on top of but for the most part rather flat lands but, but most of the environments we've seen from this game are going to be very much based off of like the southeast asia kind of environment very much agricultural lands uh, there are some parts that are more foresty which i've seen in other gameplay as well as you can see there's more like rice fields and southern that could be very like undulated but hopefully get a little more variety and terrain as well with this game as you can see as this player takes cover there's something about the ai kind of wanted to point out a little bit here again like i said this is early access but you know when you're showing the game like this it's pretty much what to expect you can see how I don't know if you can really come through on the screen, but these players are these AI characters are just kind of running out into the open, not really being very thoughtful of preserving their own lives kind of thing. So I'm really hoping that maybe they are able to improve the AI in some capacity where the utilize cover a little bit more effectively. You do see it later in this gameplay as well, but like, yeah, just running out into the middle of the street in the middle of a gunfight, like I wouldn't really expect to see that happen too often, at least 
from my experience with playing video games. Like this part right here, you do see a lot of flinch as the player takes damage and you do get the jelly on the screen, which is pretty typical of the showcase that you've taken damage. It does look like you have to manually heal, heal yourself. You do have a quick little menu that pops up right there. Be able to just heal on the fly, which is I find really important, especially in a game like this, especially in the, in the middle of a gunfight, right? Where you need to heal up. You can't be, you know, spending time digging through your inventory, trying to find where your bandages are. You need to start healing up right away, and that's very important. So this helps with the fluidity of the gameplay as well, which I really do enjoy. Next part right here I think is really interesting. As you can see, as it, our player takes some damage, he walks by a friendly player. And as you can see here, you have a chance to examine your friendly here, and uh, depending on, I'm sure, on what you want to you know use from their backpack, you're like, oh, hey, just dig in my backpack, grab what you need kind of thing. Again, a very beneficial thing to with your squad to be able to help out where needed. I did also just notice in the upper left hand corner here, you see where you took damage and you see the type of damage that you are receiving, like you're bleeding out right now. I don't know what this little head face thing is, but maybe it's a different type of like concuss or type of mental impairment that you have to deal with with the game. Maybe it's a type of suppression icon. We'll just have to wait and see. Here we see a bit of a lean mechanic as well within the game. Again, not too crazy of a lean. So it's not like, you know, Rainbow Six Siege where you're like <laughs> bending at the waist like 90 degrees. So again, a little bit more realistic in that way. But again, we see the quick drop down menu where our player is able to heal up a bit more. This is again, probably more of a long-term healing of like the bleeding that the character is currently dealing with at the moment. And you also see over here, the player checks the magazine. It looks like there's a number 13 that pops up so most likely to showcase and there are 13 bolts left in the magazine. So there, cause there is no UI for you to see like, how many bullets you have left in your gun or what's in your inventory or only thing you get a chance to see is your current player status in the upper left hand corner and the compass lets you know what direction you're going you're also able to change your fire rate as showcased in the right side of the screen which kind of expected with this type of game to be able to go fully auto or in single fire parts of this stuff when it comes to like mocked or set up get raw gameplay stuff makes me wonder if like the way they're checking their corners is supposed to be more trying to show how tactical they are than really how tactical the game actually is again it's just kind of something you have to wait and see until the general public gets a chance to jump in and play i also really like the level of detail that they put into their environments in this game you can see that this room looks like a place that's actually lived in and as the player grabs what looks to be the smartphone was probably their side objective as you see it pop in the lower right hand corner sub objective completed so you do have various main objectives and sub objectives that you need to complete while playing the game. It'll be interesting to see how they do their management system when it comes to the missions, mainly because in DMZ, from my main experience when it comes to extraction shooters, that you only have like three missions you can accomplish at one time. It's a way to kind of stretch out the gameplay a little bit. Now we finally get a chance to look at the map here. So you can see in the menu, we have a chance to look at the map, character, and tasks that you need to complete. You have the overview, camps, and landing zones. Indicated here with the LZ is Bravo 1 and Bravo 2 over here. Here's what the inventory system looks like. And yeah, pretty standard stuff that we've seen in a lot of other games out there. Just kind of click and drag for what you need. One thing I want to point out with the gameplay, you don't see the players looting bodies of AI characters. So I'm wondering if there's magazines you can pick up from them, body armor, something like that. That would be interesting to see if you can utilize that within the game. But right now, it seems like they're just kind of walking right past them. And especially since this is like the first time people are seeing the game, but you'd want to showcase if that's something. Next here is the suppression mechanic I want to talk about. As you can see the player right here who is very suppressed, vision is very blurred, but when he peeks back out to take on the enemy player, he's able to take him out just fine. So it does seem like suppression won't really be a huge factor of like maybe changing your recoil or bullet accuracy, more just a visual distortion. Looks like there is like a double time, double tap sprint mechanic in the game as well. This next part I'm really confused on why it even happened. I think it's more just to show the mechanic rather than show it when it's needed. We can see right here a player drops what is a large blood bag for you to take and then you can see our player character goes into cover to go use it. Now I'm not quite sure why he's using it because you can see in the upper left hand corner that the character looks fine health wise. I'm not quite sure what like a bandage would do over like a blood pressure reusing kind of thing, something like that. Maybe to help revitalize your character in some capacity, or you know, if you have fatigue, then you can use a blood bag to because I feel less fatigued or something. But again, we'll have to wait and see how it actually plays out. I think it was more just a moment to show that that stuff is in the game. So it'd be cool to see what different types of ailments you can have within Grey Zone Warfare to make it so then you'd have to utilize different types of healing. So this next section I thought was really interesting about how the AI plays out. You can see in the left side of the screen right there, we took out 
an enemy combatant. And so any AI in the area should know that there was like a gunfight happening as our player sprints around the corner. There's just the AI guy just kind of standing in the alleyway. Kind of, again, kind of making me a little concerned about how the AI is going to react within this game. If it's going to be more something that just deal a lot of damage and that's what makes them a dangerous aspect of the game. Or if the AI is actually smart enough to be able to react to the players properly. Next we see a bit of a breach and clear kind of moment with the door here. You can see you have an option of either open, close, unlock, or kick. And our player here decides to kick in the door. So be interesting to see like if it's like locked but then it's like a weaker door like this you'd be able to kick it in or it's like a dead bolt where like you won't be able to kick it down be interested to see if that's a mechanic within the game it takes the notepad there which ends up being another sub objective kind of wish we knew what the objectives were in this gameplay so we just kind of have a better context of what they are doing what they're aiming to do within the game because obviously with a game like an extraction shooter you're out jumping in for a purpose right you're expecting to go complete an objective within your infill and the exfill once you have it all completed. And of course, if players get in the way, well, things might get a little spicy. Here's another example of the AI that kind of has me a little concerned. You can see right here, our player shoots him right in the chest or the neck, and then he just runs right towards where he got shot from, which didn't really make a whole lot of sense for me when it comes to like how enemies would react to gunfire, right? And then we see these two guys running off to the side. So I'm assuming that these are also going to be AI characters. But then they just kind of stop and stand out in the middle of the open, making them very easy targets to take down. Next, we have a new ailment showcased in the upper left hand screen. They just have some lips with like a drop of water. So I'm assuming that this means that the player is thirsty as well. So there's definitely has some survival aspects to this game. Here we see our player character kind of kneel down to then look at the map. And you get a bit of a sense of scale of what we're talking about here. This entire gameplay we've seen is taking place within Nam Thaven, if I pronounce that correctly in this one little town but you have this entire area right here to play around with so this is a very large scale map it looks like they're trying to exfil to bravo land zone three and it looks like the way they call it is basically you open up the map this click then you click on your base camp say call in transport and then your little helicopter boy comes in to come pick you up and when it comes to exfil time you do see real quick right here that it's going to be taking about a minute and a half, two minutes when it comes to calling in a chopper. So it's good to know that you can look on your map to see what time it takes. So now remember I talked about earlier about the player being looking like they're thirsty. They open the bottle of water and to alleviate the thirsty ailment that they have right now on their character. And our heroes find the chopper, lands right in the area, jump into the seat, and then you just kind of take off from there. And that's Gray Zone Warfare's first look at gameplay. I will say kudos on the developers to be willing to show just 25 minutes of raw gameplay of just showcasing what the moment to moment play is going to be like for this game and pretty much what you would expect from an extraction shooter. Now we didn't see any PVP, at least it didn't look like PVP at the moment for playing this game and like i said it would have been really nice to see what objectives they had and how the objectives really play into how you play the game if you're able to choose where you land when it comes to an infill what do you get for completing objectives we'll really just have to wait and see how this game will play out more i'm sure we'll learn more as we get closer to the release that's going to be happening this year and we'll cover more about it on the channel here